you here are currently at 110 hearts. That's how many people have died from COVID uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. And um, this part back here, that's Claire Zoe. She died less than 24 hours ago. And I also today just placed these other two hearts. You can see there's no snow on it yet, but those three hearts that represent three people who've died in Champaign County in the last two days. My name is Julie Lout. Um, I live here in Urbana, Illinois. I've been here for about 12 years. I'm a member of the Unitarian Universalist Church. We miss her very much, and um, we're glad. We also have not been able to participate in any kind of memorial for her. And so this has helped us a lot to have this opportunity. For me, it felt like I, I needed to do something. I can't do the things that I feel like I would normally do in a death like that. There's really been so little outlet for people to do any kind of mourning, um, even though we'd lost, at that point, I think 250,000 people had died. And right here in Champaign-Urbana, so we sort of started coming up with the idea of maybe doing some kind of public memorial. I just want to welcome you to the you. UU Church of Urbana Champaign and thank you for being here this morning to honor the members of our community, each one represented by a heart here. This has been a very challenging year for so many in our community. Nothing has been normal since March of 2020. We have had to find new ways to work, learn, communicate, worship, interact, and engage. We grieve for the 102 people lost to COVID-19 and pledge in their memory and to their unlived years to move forward together with love. This Open Hearts Memorial is a powerful testament, I think, to those that are lost in our community, but I also hope that it serves as a cause for inspiration to all of us to redouble our efforts to continue the hard work that is certainly going to be necessary to protect each and every one of us in the months to come. This gives us an opportunity to think and as we think we heal, we grow, and we move forward. It felt to me like it was in a way ministry to those leaders, giving them a place to uh, speak and mourn and feel in their roles, but also just as human beings who are really affected by this pandemic more directly than some of the rest of us. Maybe 10 or 15 percent of our hearts have names on them now. And what that tells me is that a lot of the people who have died almost certainly have been from marginalized communities, um, whether that's the uh, Latinx community here who are often doing the most dangerous jobs, like the people who got sick early in the pandemic in the meatpacking plant, Black community the poor uh, communities, um, the very old who may not even have friends and family in the area. To me, actually, in some ways, the, the hearts without names are really poignant. see these markers as a way for each time that I passed here. So I can remember those folks, not only from across Champaign County, but for each of us to remember our loved ones who succumbed to this horrible infection. And it will provide an opportunity for us to see their faces and hear their voices each time we pass this place.
she was uh, a huge spirit in a, in a tiny form and deeply, deeply loved by the congregation and by me. I really loved Claire. She was somebody that all of us knew and loved and respected and um, is an example of how an entire generation of people are kind of, you know, it's really our elders who are being lost and their stories and their years are being lost. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great loss to all of us. My name is Jim Hannum. I'm 75 years old and my wife and I have lived in Champaign-Urbana since 1982. My brother-in-law died of COVID in Madison, Wisconsin in June. He was 77 years old. He was a great, a guy with a great sense of humor and taught all our kids to say, pig out, just before you started <laughs> dinner. That was, his, that was his dinner prayer. He had um, significant health complications before that. And then in, in a kind of an odd way, uh, our family looked at his death as kind of a blessing. The, the family did come together and to spread his cremains in a wooded area near Madison, Wisconsin. And they did that with social distancing and face masks, but it wasn't the same as having a, you know, a, a, a more traditional memorial service where friends and family all gathered together. So having a memorial service for, you know, at least a small group of people who had lost friends and relatives having us come together, I thought was a nice, a nice touch. My name's Herbert Easton. Uh, uh, Herbert, I use for business and uh, just, just her socially. She's just a year older than I. Uh, but um, I'm just thinking that this is probably the only memorial service she's gonna get and I'll, I'll let her children know. So uh, Laura's her niece, so I, you want to say something about Carol? Yeah, she was my California yeah. aunt and brought a lot of grooviness to our Midwestern lives. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for her, I'll always be grateful for her spirit. She taught me to, t uh, to cook with wine, which was so radical in the <laughs> 70s, and um, a great spirit. Oh, I'll miss her. She uh, and she she had kind of a lonely life, and just, uh, I'll I'll go by there, and, and and when I go by, I'll stop and look, and, and uh, have some thoughts, do a little reminiscing. strongly that when I subsume, when I allow myself to give into a broken heart, it's too easy to turn it inward and become very small and scared. And when I extend it out, I'm met with, I'm met with what I need. And that's this and all this that we're doing together. So um, that's the intent behind it. And I love you all for needing me where I'm at, and I hope that this is helpful uh, to you as well. Personally, for me, it really has been very healing to have um, an opportunity to mourn and cry um, and and be, um, yeah, kind of what we normally might we would have done in a memorial service or a funeral, and we kind of created that. I created that for myself, I guess.